done a live virtual flag. So this is, this is the way we're starting off the 2021 school year. You should be able to see there is over 230 attendees and you, those, all of those people should be able to see panelists. There's about 20 of us, I believe, who you should be able to see on this screen. We can all wave to you. We are all doing some part of this morning's flag activities. Um, among, I'm sure, those 220 people are, are, are um, attendees are lots of new students and families, and we'll talk a little bit more about them in a little bit. For those of you who are brand new to Hillbrook, we do flag every single week, and there are certain parts of it that we, that we always do. So we always start um, by saying good morning, so that's always a good, we've gotten that part out of the way. And then we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And so um, we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Selleck is going to bring a flag up on the screen for us. So we have a flag to see. And we can, we can all stand up. <laughs> We're gonna say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's why we call it flag. So, thank you for doing that. We got we got the we've now done the the pledge. The next thing that we do are birthdays. And so um, this week, uh, I should also add, um, in a while over in the next few weeks, we'll start getting some students helping us to co-run flag. Um, right now, our student council hasn't been selected, so we don't have students to help co-run flag. But typically, um, in the, over the course of the year, we'll have students who will do the pledge, students who will do the birthday lists, and so on and so forth. But for today, I'm, I'm playing a couple of those roles that normally we have kids do. So with birthdays, I'm going to read a bunch of names. We have a lot, quite a few birthdays this week. And then we are going to have a special guest lead us in singing happy birthday. Um, but so let's, so in, we have a bunch of birthdays here. Let's see, we have Annabelle Horton. Big round of applause for Annabelle. Jack Leaning, happy birthday, Jack. Henry Wang, happy birthday, Henry. Martin Dimitrov, happy birthday, Martin. Brady Reese, happy birthday, Brady. Ava Zafiropolo, happy birthday, Ava. Alicia Fong, happy birthday, Alicia. Sabrina Swank, happy birthday, Sabrina. And we have four teachers as well. We have Miss Richards, happy birthday to Miss Richards. We have Miss Mack, who's actually on the screen with us here. Happy birthday, Miss Mack. We have Coach T, his birthday's coming up. And then we also have Miss Shiro, who might be on the screen with us as well. I'm not sure, but I know she was joining us, but happy birthday to Miss Shiro. So that's a great group. Great group for birthdays. And as I said earlier, we have a special guest. We have Mia Kabarlock, fabulous member of the class of 2020. Amazing singer, amazing person, freshman at Archbishop Mitty High School. And she's taking a break from her online experience at Archbishop Mitty this morning to join us to sing happy birthday. Thanks for joining us, Mia. Thanks for having me. Okay. Really Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everyone. Happy birthday to you. Hey! That was awesome, Mia. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. For and for those, um, we are going to try to have a different person singing happy birthday with us each week. So it was really great to have a special guest from, from our alum community join us this week. And just so people understand, one of the reasons why we only have one person sing is if you have like 20 of us trying to sing, the sound doesn't work. So we have one great voice leading us through Happy Birthday. So thanks again, Mia. Thanks for doing that. All right. Um, so uh, I wanted to take a moment to introduce, we have a whole host of new employees um, there. Uh, and so I wanted to, sh to share some names. We have a uh, new teacher in lower school music, Jamie Piazza. And, and by the way, people will have an opportunity to meet all of these fabulous people over the course of this year. So we have Jamie Piazza, who's a new lower school music teacher. Christina Tran Kenyon, who's teaching sixth grade math. Joey Rivetto, who will be a first grade resident teacher. Megan Pappas, who will be a second grade resident teacher. 
Matt Callahan, who is the Associate Director of the Scott Center for Social Entrepreneurship and will also be teaching an eighth grade course this year. A few people who are not new but are playing new roles. Adriana Aguirre will be a first grade lead teacher after having been a fabulous resident teacher for the last few years. Heather Stinnett is moving from first grade to third grade, where she will be a lead, lead, lead teacher. McKenna Queneva, who was a resident, will now be a kindergarten lead teacher. Jocelyn McMahon, who has been helping with musicals and subbing for the last few years, will be a kindergarten resident teacher. And then a couple of people who are taking on other new roles. Kelly Skolton is our new associate head of lower school. Big round of applause for Kelly. She has been doing extraordinary work this summer, getting us ready for the start of the school year. Um, Laura Hale will be the new middle school dean of students. She's also been doing great stuff, getting us teed up for the year. And then a few more new people. We have Jenna Lyons, who is our new school counselor. Hopefully some of the parents listened to the podcast this past weekend and heard Jenna's very wise words um, as we were heading into the school year. James Skinner, who is our health coordinator, who's gonna help keep us all healthy and safe this year um, amidst the pandemic. Um, Felicity Jimenez Howard, who is our new Associate Director of Advancement. Sherry Kotko, who is our new Sub Coordinator and Middle School Assistant. And Geraldine Cabutaton, who is our Extended Care Associate. So a big round of applause for all of those people, a whole group of fabulous new people um, who have joined our community. And now I'm going to introduce um, Rakaya Brown, our Director of Enrollment Management, and she and some other people are going to um, welcome uh, new families to our community. Hi everyone, happy new school year. I'm so excited that we're starting the school year this way together live, although not in person. It's so lovely to see that we have 382 participants on the call. Um, as Mark wrote in his opening letter to families, um, yesterday, we have 71 new students starting at Hillbrook this year, which is extraordinary. And those 71 students make up 51 new families. Um, our biggest entry points are junior kindergarten with having 15 students, kindergarten having 23 new students, and sixth grade having 12 new students. And I had the privilege of getting to know all of those families throughout the admissions process, and I'm so excited for your Hillbrook journey to begin today officially. And so I have a couple of Hillbrook members today to welcome you to the community. So first, I'll turn it over to Le Layla Sayre, who has a bit of a welcome for our parents. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 school year. I work, um, I'm the president of HSBC, that's the Hillbrook School Parent Council. And I work very closely with my dear friend. Hi everyone, I'm Meg Galley. Nice, nice seeing you, wonderful new year. And so we wanted to talk to you guys about how Hillbrook isn't just a school. It's a wonderful community that's built on the foundation of great teachers, wonderful students, and caring families. And normally by this time of the year, we would have numerous community events and where we would welcome families to our great community and revisit with returning time. This year is a little different, but rest assured that even though we are apart, we are still together. This year, Meg and I, along with the support of numerous parents, aim to maintain some of Hillbrook's time-honored traditions, when possible, of course, and hopefully we'll get to create some new ones. We are excited to leverage our reliance on virtual meetups to provide the parent community with a variety of parent education events, some of which are gonna be in collaboration with Gulliver Lavage in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So let's make this a great year and follow that silver lining. We always appreciate feedback and suggestions, and you can always reach out to me and Meg directly. Have a wonderful year ahead. Thanks, Layla. Um, that was a wonderful, warm welcome. So now we have three of our middle school student ambassadors who are have a bit of advice for our new students at Hillbrook. So first we'll have Estella Guido, who is a sixth grader this year. Estella, you're up. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Estella, and I'm in sixth grade, as you know. Um, last year was my first year at Hillbrook, and I was super nervous. Um, I didn't really know anyone, and I didn't really have any friends there. So 
but the teachers were so friendly and helpful, which made the first day really easy. Um, as the days passed, people started talking to me and including me in projects and asked to sit with me. Um, and it was so nice. And, uh, um, as the, and now I can honestly say that I've made some best friends over the year and it's all because of Hillbrook. This is probably the best school I've ever been to. And I hope it's the same experience for all of you that is new today. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Estella. Next up, we have Deeksha Hala, who's a seventh grader at Hillbrook. Hi, everyone. My name is Deeksha, and I'm in seventh grade, as you've been told. This message is especially for the new kids coming in this year. A lot of my peers here have spent their entire life at Hillbrook, but me, I haven't. I came in fourth grade. As any new kid would be, I was worried I wasn't going to fit in with them. But I found extremely reliable friends that have actually stayed with me to this day. Don't worry if you don't think you'll be able to make friends. Because of Hillbrook, you can find friends who will always be there for you. I understand it might be a little bit more challenging and different because of the whole online school. Here at Hillbrook, they will find a way for you to make strong connections while keeping safe. What makes Hillbrook different from other schools is that it is a school where you can try and then you can fail and nobody will judge you. At Hillbrook, you don't need to be afraid of asking questions because everyone will come and help you if you need it. I'm going to wrap this up with one piece of advice. Be your best. For example, Hillbrook doesn't expect you to be the top of your class, but to achieve your best. Remember to take this principle with you everywhere, outside of class and outside of Hillbrook. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. I hope you are all staying safe and have a great year. Thanks, Deeksha. And then last but certainly not least, we have an eighth grader. So Sebastian, you're up. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Sebastian Johansson. I'm in eighth grade and I'm here to welcome you to Hillbrook School. I can still vividly remember my first day at Hillbrook. It was August 29th, 2012, and I was terrified. Why? I was going into kindergarten. Not only this, but I was headed to a new school, away from the friends and landscapes I had become acquainted with. This was the first time I truly felt it that dreadful feeling, nervousness. I was worried, worried that the other kids wouldn't like me, worried that I would not be as mature as the other kids. I'm not going to tell you not to be nervous. Instead, I'm going to show you why you don't need to be. Hillbrook's community, the teachers, administration, families, and students are what makes Hillbrook unique. Hillbrook is a diverse community of students with unique interests skill sets, and passions to the point where it's impossible not to find a friend you can connect with. From firsthand experience and nine years at this school, I can tell you that Hillbrook's teachers are genuinely want to help you learn and care about how you are doing. This is an environment where you are encouraged to ask questions and empowered to make a difference. I wish you the best of luck and a stable Wi-Fi connection in the, in the new school year. Thank you. Thanks, Sebastian. I am also wishing everybody stable Wi-Fi, especially for these first two weeks together in virtual learning. Um, and so for our students who are on the call that are especially new to Hillbrook at our middle school level, so those were three of our student ambassadors. And so there will be lots of opportunities this year for you to get involved in lots of different ways, whether it's speaking at FLAG or helping us with our admissions process. So I wanna thank all of our student ambassadors and Layla and Meg for welcoming our new families to Hillbrook. I'll turn it back over to Mark. Thanks, Rakaya. That was fabulous. Um, th that was such a great new thing that we've, ne we've never done that before because we've always been in person. That was so cool. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. That was such a heartwarming way to get this year started. 
every year, and, and Deeksha said it, so be your best. Every year we pick a theme. We have four core values. Be kind, be curious, take risks, be your best. And this year, the theme that we're going to focus on is be your best. I don't know if Deeksha knew that or not, but she, but she, she teed us up. So I, I want, I'm going to share a few words, then I'm going to turn it over to um, some other people to talk a little bit about what it looks like to be your best. Um, the, already, uh, those three student speakers have shown us what it looks like to be your best. Um, but when I was thinking about uh, where I wanted to start this for the year, is I was thinking a lot about how role models help us learn about being our best. And in particular, um, there's one role model who I've been thinking about a lot this summer, um, and that's somebody named John Lewis. And um, I hope that many of you have heard of his name, and, and you may have heard of his name because he um, passed away this summer at the age of 80 um, after a very long and storied career as a civil rights leader, a politician, and an advocate for justice. Um, and uh, I, I am, for many people may not know, but I started my career as a history teacher um, and as a U.S. history teacher, and my passion was the civil rights movement. And so early on in my life, I learned, started learning about John Lewis, um, who is truly an extraordinary man. At the age of 20, John Lewis became an active part of the civil rights movement back in 1960. And he was one of the early people to organize things such as lunch counter sit-ins, which were an effort to get rid of Jim Crow laws that kept black people and other people from color from being able to eat at lunch counters and, and uh, go into certain stores. He then participated in something called the Freedom Rides, where he risked his life and he and others to um, desegregate buses across the South. And he was a leader in a group called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, um, which was one of the leading civil rights organizations. And one of the things that always so impressed me about that organization is all of the people who were running it were under the age of about 25. They, all, they were all in their early 20s when they started this, and they became nationwide and internationally known people fighting for the rights of others. Um, his most famous moment may have been 55 years ago during what was called the March from Selma to Montgomery. Um, and there was a lot of images of this this summer after he passed away, um, where he and a group of people uh, marched across a bridge and marched all the way from um, Selma to Montgomery to fight for voting rights and that, to ensure that people had the right and to ensure black people had the right to vote. He then spent 34 years as a member of the US House of Representatives um, as an elected official. And so as I was thinking about, you know, what does it mean for John Lewis and what does it mean for all of us to understand what it means to be his best? I mean, you know, so he's somebody who dedicated his life to fighting for the rights of all people, um, for fighting for the rights for children to have access to good schools, for removing Jim Crow laws, um, and for removing barriers. Uh, in his, after he, after he passed away, they published an essay that he had written right before he died. And in that essay, he has this beautiful line. He says, ordinary people, with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by what, what I call getting in good trouble, necessary trouble. He also wrote, in my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. And this, which really spoke to me as I was thinking about all of our students here today, when historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. John Lewis is an, was an amazing man. And I, th I think there's really three things that in particular stood out for me. You know, he taught us that we need to look at what the world is and then understand what it might be. He taught us that we need to stand up for others and do what is right, even if it is hard. Um, and that he taught us that the most powerful force for change is love. So I hope that um, you learn a little bit more about him. Um, and then I hope that you take not just the inspiration from John Lewis, but you take the inspiration to learn from other people and other role models, people who've lived lives of, uh, that, of real value um, and, and learn from them. And also remember, as I said, he started when he was really young. All of you have the ability to change the world. You don't have to wait to grow up to do that. Um, so um, with that, I want to turn it over to a few other um, uh, students who are going to share some thoughts. But um, to, to get that started, I'm going to turn it over to Annie Mack, um, Miss Mack, uh, the director of the Scott Center for Social Entrepreneurship. Thanks so much, Mr. Silver. I love that quote so much. And um, as you mentioned, the vision of the Scott Center for Social Entrepreneurship at Hillbrook is 
um, to see the world as it is, to imagine what it might be, and to partner with your local communities to make change. So we are excited to have um, a few students, many of you on this call, over 100 people participated in summer programming through the Scott Center and our summer camps. So thank you all so much for joining us over the summer. A lot of what we did is talk about the ways in which we can all make a difference, both locally in our communities and globally. And I have two students that are gonna pop in and share a little bit more about their experience with the Scott Center Civic Engagement Camp, which was the first time we've run that camp. Um, a huge shout out to Mr. Chang and Mr. Callahan who co-ran that camp. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren Dempsey to share a little bit of what resonated with her for that Civic Institute camp. So Lauren, if you can unmute and join us, thanks so much for being here. Hi, my name is Lauren Dempsey and I am in eighth grade at Hillbrook. Over the summer, I participated in the Civic Summer Camp through the Scott Center. Each day we learn a different part about the US political system and civics and civil rights. For example, one day we learned about Martin Luther King Jr. And we also learned about Lyndon B. Johnson, Black Lives Matter. And one day we learned about kind of like how courts work. My favorite day is when we learned about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She is an American politician and she's a representative for New York's 14th Congressional District. She is the youngest woman ever to be a part of the United States Congress. I learned that she's proposing the Green New Deal and we learned about her ideas and we debated the pros and cons of the Green New Deal in camp. And I really enjoyed this camp because it gave me opportunities to discuss topics that we don't normally discuss in class and I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you so much, Lauren. I love that you pointed out the importance of debate with civic engagement. So naming both things that are working well and also areas that um, need we need to think deeper about. Piper, will you jump in and share what resonated deeply with you about the Civic Institute camp? Yes, um, I was drawn to the Scott Center Civic Institute camp because I think everybody in this world deserves justice. At Hillbrook last year, I was really involved with HERO because I think LGBTQ plus rights is really important. The camp was about civil rights and how to make a social change. We learned many ways of starting a social change and how politics is sometimes part of it. We also learned about the presidential campaign and how Congress works. I was really interested in the Selma to Montgomery March, which took place in 1965 during the Civil Rights Movement. The march was for voting rights and it included Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lewis. We compared the marches from 1965 and the Black Lives Matter marches this past summer. I participated in one of the Black Lives Matter marches in Los Gatos this June with a lot of other people at Hillbrook. I found it really inspiring. From the camp and from my own experiences, I have learned that everybody, even kids, can make a change. Thank you so much, Piper. We were also reminded of the incredible generosity of the Hillbrook community this past week as we um, shared the opportunity to make donations for um, the victims that have experienced evacuation or have lost homes during these fires. The wildfires have been an additional um, complexity to our life these days. And I cannot tell you, I know it was so heartwarming for the entire Hillbrook community to see those boxes fill up with all sorts of great resources. Those will be delivered this afternoon to um, quite a few different organizations. We're lucky to partner with organizations like Uplift Family Services, the American Red Cross, the SPCA, the Farm Worker Family Alliance community, um, as well as a school that is run that where a Hillbrook parent is teaching and reached out and um, asked for our support to have school supplies delivered. So please, um, know that your donations are going to incredible places that, that really need our help. And we are so honored by your generosity and so inspired by, um, even before school has started, by all of the ways in which students and families are reaching beyond to make a difference. Passing it back to you, Mr. Silver. Thanks, Annie. And that you, what wonderful, um, what also wonderful just inspiration around being your best and like the different ways that that looks. Um, and so, so proud of this community and the way it continues to stand up. 
I want to introduce one more person to talk about being their best. And this is somebody who everybody knows well, and that's Mr. D. Um, and Mr. D is going to talk a little bit about the amazing work that he does outside of Hillbrook. He does a lot of great things here, but the amazing work that he does outside of Hillbrook to help the community. And then he's also going to tie it a little bit back to the school's history. So, uh, Mr. D. Good morning, everybody. Um, so excited. First day of school, and it's good to see everybody. Um, I have a nonprofit organization, and it's called uh, No Time to Waste. And when you hear the word nonprofit, it's a business that focuses on helping those who are in need. And what our focus is, is to provide food for those who are hungry. And we pick up donated um, food from businesses and restaurants, and we deliver it to those who are hungry. And since March, we have focused on those who are affected by COVID-19. And it could be someone who is sick, it could be someone who's quarantined, um, an elderly person who is sheltered in place, or it could be someone who lost their job and they need extra food. Um, and since March, we have provided over 9,000 meals for those who are in need. Um, and I wanted to um, also let you know that I know a lot about the history of Hillbrook, and I wanted to let you know that Hillbrook has had a long history of helping during crisis. And if we go all the way back 70 plus years uh, to the 1940s when we were in World War II, the students at Hillbrook School back then wanted to help out. And what they were doing is many of the students were living on campus. So that's where their, where their housing was. They were, um, they were uh, making what was called victory gardens. They were planting vegetables on campus so that they had food to eat, not only on campus, but to donate to the community. And they also picked all the fruit from the fruit trees. And back then there were lots of fruit trees. So they would pick the fruit, they would can it, they would dry it, and they would have a food source for months at a time. So 70 years ago, Hillbrook was already being their best. Um, and like Ms. Max said, they started being their best this year already by having a donation drive for um, the victims of the wildfires. So um, as Mr. Silver said, you're never too young to start. You can be your best. It can be very simple. Um, if you want to donate, you can donate maybe clothes that um, you're, too, you're too big for. Maybe it's a toy that you're not playing with anymore. Uh, it could be as simple as just making a drawing or a card. Um, the way you know you're going to be your best is if you're, if you're doing something that's going to make someone smile, then you know it's going to make you smile. And if you're doing that, then you're being your best. So I hope you be your best this year, and I uh, hope everyone has a great year. Thank you so much, Paul. Thanks for, thanks for sharing those thoughts. So no flag is complete without everybody's favorite tradition, and that is jokes. So we are going to be creating a, a system this week where people can send in jokes um, and, and we'll be able to collect them and, and we'll find ways to get different volunteers to tell jokes. It was a little bit harder heading into the school year to do that um, because we weren't with any of you yet. And so what we did is we turned to our employees to ask them if some of them would volunteer to tell jokes. And then we also talked to a few of the people who we already knew were presenting today and asked them if they might be willing to share some jokes while they were on screen this morning. So um, we, have a, we have a great list of people to tell, to tell jokes this morning. We're gonna start with Susan Timpano, Ms. Timpano and Ms. De Palma have a joke for us. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. De Palma. Good morning, I'm Ms. Timpano. Why did the teacher's eyes cross? I don't know. Why? Because she couldn't see her pupils. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great start. Next, we've got Mr. Lavage. Good morning, Hillbrook. So why did all the Hillbrook students throw their alarm clocks out the window this morning? I don't know. Why? Because they wanted to see time fly. <laughs> Thank you, Golly. Miss Shiro. Good morning. Good, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, happy first day of school. 
So if you know me, I'm a dog lover. So here's my joke. The World Health Organization, also known as WHO, announced that dogs cannot contract COVID-19. So dogs previously held in quarantine can now all be released. To be clear, who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Roseanne. Uh, next, we have Miss Wells. Hi, everyone. I'm Miss Wells. All right. Why did the teacher wear sunglasses to school? I don't know. Why? Because her students were so bright. Hey. Thanks, Miss Wells. Miss Hendricks. Good morning. Where do you find a no legged dog? I don't know. Where? Right where you left him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stamos. Okay. So there's this person walking through the desert, and all of a sudden he sees this person crawling up to him saying, Water, water, water. And he goes up to the guy and says, I need water. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm a tie salesman. I can sell you a tie. He goes, no, I need water. He goes, okay, there's an inn about five miles due east. So the guy leaves and the guy's walking. And all of a sudden, like five hours later, here comes the same person, water, water, water. And the other guy goes, didn't they give you water? He goes, no, they wouldn't let me in without a tie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stamos. And now we've got a couple of students. Sebastian was going to tell a joke. Um, okay. Sorry, can I just bring it up? Yes, of course. You want me, you want me to do have Lauren and Colin go first, or you got it? Oh, no, I have it. Awesome. Okay. A man from Los Angeles drove towards New York at 250 miles per hour, and a man from New York drove towards Los Angeles at 150 miles per hour. Where do they meet? I don't know, where? In traffic school. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sebastian. And for our final joke, we have Lauren and Colin, a brother-sister duo. What did the mushroom say to the other mushroom? I don't know, what? You're a fun guy. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks to all of our good sports for telling jokes. Um, thanks to all of you who joined us this morning to share different thoughts and, and to welcome people. Um, this is such a great start to the 2020-21 school year. We are so excited to have everybody back. Have a fabulous week, have a great day, and be your best. Mm -hmm.